Hello and welcome. Well, one, one, uh, uh, I love the film because it, it explores uh, human nature and the need that we all have to love each other. And I think that in some cases, uh, it question myself if monogamy is on our DNA or is, mm -hmm. uh, is part of the social environment. So I don't know. So I like that aspect of the film and many others. Could you, uh, Victor, could you comment on that? And then we go with the ladies. Yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, like, thanks for, uh, I'm glad you liked it. Um, as far as uh, whether or not monogamy is in our DNA, I'm not qualified to speak on that, <laughs> I don't think. Um, but um, I don't know. The, I don't know if one thing is right and the other thing is wrong. I mean, I think the movie is more about uh, exploring and figuring out what works for you. And it's not, I don't think it's trying to, is trying to say that um, if your marriage is feeling stale, this is like a magic bullet to fix it. Uh, but it's more like if you have an instinct towards someone and you want to explore it, um, maybe just be honest about that and see what happens. You know. I think uh, what I liked about is uh, I think that uh, Olivia uh, brings brings into the story like uh, she's the. I mean, both of them uh, drew, drew a nanny question questioning their own lives. I think they're a little bored with themselves and with the relationship, which is natural because we, we expect so much from life and then maybe, yeah. And then Olivia represents change and then they all jump to change and they create this geometrical figure of three and uh, from there on, right? <laughs> So could could uh, uh, you talk about that? Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, it's I. That's exactly how I feel about it. I love how you even said it. Where I don't think their relationship, Nina and Drew's relationship, is failing by any means. I just think the monotony of life and a single relationship feels a little stale. Um, I think the issue came in of the change that it wasn't necessarily thought out so well and, and communication wasn't uh, uh, put in place where they even knew what they were exploring and if they had boundaries or limitations, it kind of said, let's change. And then they did it. Um, and, and it forced them to, uh, I think it a little bit more of a bumpier road, but they eventually I think navigated it to a really lovely place. Uh, but I, I think it was, you're really spot on in regards to like the dynamic of the relationship. Hey, do you think that your character symbolizes the freshness of adventure? The I'm ready to jump into the pool without a float, no protection <laughs> <laughs> or not. And uh, Amy and Nina and Drew are more like, we're here together, you know. <laughs> I guess that... Um... I really like the character of Olivia because yeah. you, you can kind of project whatever you want onto her. Mm. Um, and I think Nina does that, Drew does that, she, her brother does that. Um, yeah, and it, that's a beautiful thing in life is that you, you never know who you meet in life. They may completely change how you think of yourself, how you think of people around you. And um, yeah, I think that there was just some magic in that, that no one was expecting this to happen. Olivia, Nina, Drew, no one was expecting this to happen. And um, when it does and you feel some sort of connection with someone, um, that's a powerful instinct. It's like probably one of the most intoxicating feelings you can have is that electricity between you and someone else. I'd like you to know, wait. Uh, I, um, Sorry, Victor. I, uh, I, I just want to say that... Um, well, it's possible that Olivia does represent a change to um, Nina and Drew, you know, uh, possibly in the beginning, and maybe to audiences in the beginning, that she's more of a representation of change. I like to think that as the story progresses and you get to know her more, she isn't just a symbol, you know, or, you know, a uh, device for these other two to uh, change. She is a whole character with her own needs and her own um, of course, you know, path, because I feel like in a lot of these movies, uh, even in like monogamous love stories, there's the uh, woman who comes in and she's like, I'm going to, you know, change your life. And, you know, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> and uh, 
Kate and I really talked a lot about uh, that trope and how to avoid that and to make Olivia a full and, and dynamic character. So I don't think any one character really represents anything ultimately. They're all just people and they're all yeah. kind of together, you know? It, the thing is, let me clarify one thing. When I, th when I throw balls like this, doesn't mean that I'm like totally like that, but I need to <laughs> make you react in a certain way and without manipulating, you know? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, we're all very complete and we're very dynamic and we're not only one thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's say, uh, so Victor, some people think that, that uh, you're very close to Drew in terms of, is that some a little autobiographical? I don't. I don't think so. I, I, I mean, I guess we're both like, you know, five foot ten, like Irish guys with kind of red beards. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't see. I, I honestly, I all three of the lead characters are different facets of my personality in different ways, and there's th some ways that I relate to Drew, but. I'd say Nina is probably more me if I had to pick one than of, of the three of them. And I certainly didn't cast Ryan because he looks a little bit like me. <laughs> like, does. I would rather cast someone who like doesn't look like me, honestly. But um, he was just so good. He was just the best actor I saw. So no one's going to believe that is exactly. You, you know, the great thing about the movie, at least I felt that way when I saw it, is that uh, I was able to be each one of them a certain situations. Mm. Uh, because we're all... Uh, uh, diverse were not only one thing. So I, I was Nina, I was, I was Drew, I was Olivia. I love that. <laughs> but Olivia, for me, uh, with Silver, I know she doesn't represent anything, but I, I'm more like controlling, like, you know who. <laughs> <laughs> like, who? Like, like, <laughs> it's like, like Nina Kate. Nina Kate. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm more that way as well. <laughs> I'm more you <laughs> and uh, let me say, I think uh, the film uh, flows so well. I'm sure you had a great time doing it, no? Or it was, it feels so natural. It feels like a, a documentary almost. How did uh, you accomplish uh, that? Uh, I think part of it is casting well and having a small and like fun uh, crew because the energy on set, even though we were all working very hard every day, was very loose. And we, and we were just showing up and like having, trying to have a good time, you know, because you have to keep it loose if you want to get something natural out of people. And um, even though the dialogue is very specific and kind of heavily written, we would be reworking it constantly to try and make it feel more real, you know, if, like t down to like one word, if it wasn't working, we would be t always talking about it and always trying to make it feel more real. I think the movie lives or dies whether or not you actually buy the characters and what's going on with them. They explode and everybody opens up and then we know who we are in a way. Mm -hmm. We didn't know who we were before everything just happened, I think. Do you agree with that, Brian, Drew? Um. Yeah, I think that uh, right. for a lot of instances, you know, uh, people have to go through a period of um, deconstruction and, you know, they have to face their worst demons in order to kind of progress. And um, I think that, you know, each character does go through that, you know, for Drew, he has to find a way to re reassert himself and voice his opinions and stand up for himself. And for Nina, she's got to lose control. And um for Olivia, Olivia's kind of elusive a little bit. <laughs> I guess her thing is she, she's got to tie herself down. You know, she's kind of been floating and drifting through life and not having to uh, account for herself to anyone. And, and this is her opportunity to do so. Grow up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and none of you, not, you know, all of you played it so sincerely. You know, no, not one of you was like, cooler than your character like you know what I mean like you you would approach everything from a very humble and honest you know egoless kind of uh perspective I didn't for a love story I think it's important not to be well I don't know for this one anyway I didn't want it to be too cool I wanted it to 
even, you know, we even have like a falling in love montage in it. Like you can't do a cheesier thing in a movie than a falling in love montage. But like, I wanted to like lean into those things and be sincere about that because when you're falling in love, it kind of feels like a falling in love montage in a movie, you know? So, but you know what? I love the cheesiness of the montage with the cool. music. And I felt, oh my God, I want to be one of them. I want to, th- <laughs> I want, I want to. I want to share my love with everybody. <laughs> Bring me more. It's it's great. Why not? Why not make people happy with something that mm. I think um, part of uh, the reason why we go to movies is to uh, improve our perception of reality and find happiness. Uh, no, a, a little. I thought it was. I don't consider it cheesy. Or maybe I'm very cheesy. I'm cheesy. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say it. It. Right, like it feels cheesy, but those moments when you when you're falling in love, those things happen. You're like cheesy. You become cheesy, right? Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. talk in certain ways. I'm like, I can't believe that word just came. Like, I never say that phrase, but like, I can yeah. think of like a lunch with my husband, and in my mind, it my memory of it almost feels like a montage. Like, there's a song that even feels like it plays to it. Like, it was so magical. And if it was in a movie, it may seem cheesy, but it was very real. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was uh, one question for Ryan. Ryan, do you think that your character is the kind of person that uh, is happy making people happy at the beginning, and then he learns how to respect himself and ask for things? Absolutely. And the ladies are more determined. They know more what they want within their confusion. Yeah, exactly. I think that that that's kind of Drew's purpose in the story. And that's, you know, his journey, you know, early on, he's, he's a little bit lost in the sense that he's easygoing, and he has a job and he has a marriage, but I don't think he knows himself inside of those things, you know, and so Olivia's arrival and uh, Nina's descent kind of into that really made him face some hard questions, you know, about whether or not uh, he is fit for um, a regular monogamous relationship, you know, or whether he's supposed to be married and whether or not these things have been his decision and his plan, or if he kind of just got roped up and everything. And because Nina has such a, a strong personality, if he just got swept up in, in her wants and her needs and never addressed his own. And I think there's a great scene where uh, Kate, and this is what causes the rift between the two of them, but Kate's character, Olivia, there's something that I've been waiting to do. And for the first time, you know, I get to do it with her. And um, I think that's the first moment of him kind of, you know, coming into his own. Yeah, it's like when uh, Drew says, well, this is what I want to do and I'll do it. And Nina, yeah. But we yeah. better don't get a, give away the, that was an important part, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, I want to I want to ask uh, to Victor. Victor, uh, do you think that uh, the women in the film are more determined? They know more what they want, or you don't like to generalize things like that? The two ladies are more are women more like that? I don't know. I'm asking that. I tried not to gender those things as much as I could. Um, I think everyone. I think you know what we were just talking about with Ryan was great because it's more like each person in this triangle, and even our supporting characters regardless of gender, needs to learn, you know, what it is they actually want and what it is they actually need and how to communicate those needs. And like, I think um, each person's version of that is different. Um, And like, so like uh, Drew needs to kind of come to terms a bit more with like be honest about his more submissive nature and then really own it and like have that be a, a kind of character defining trait um that could have easily been a female character you know like i feel like i could have swapped any one of the three and it still would have worked it just kind of like happened that each of these people had these specific traits Uh, i wasn't trying i wasn't trying to say anything in particular about gender in fact the fact that um nina uh, uh is attracted to a woman she kind of notes like i've barely even ever been with a girl before it's not really a thing but that's about the most we talk about it it's not really a, a part of the plot so much it's no it's like, it comes natural i think yeah and we kind of want to keep it that way because it's not really about 
gender so much. And it's not really about a woman discovering her sexuality either. It's kind of more, I mean, sex is a part of the relationship, but it's really all about what they're feeling. It's not like, oh my God, I'm gay or I'm a lesbian. It's not like, it's just, I'm here and I met this person. I totally, I totally took it like that. But it wait. Like 2020 in Southern California. So it's not like, it's a world shattering thing <laughs> either. It's kind of like, that's the environment that they're in. That's the world that they're in. So it's like, huh, I'm in this woman. Interesting. All right. Let's see yeah, we're going. not in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Without offending anybody, but this not, is not going to be shown in Iowa. You're not <laughs> but, this yeah. but I want to say so that you as a group, all of you have created, when I first started watching the film, I thought, oh, it's going to be a sweet romantic comedy, you know, a little superficial and fun. But then it became, an, in, it became this exploration of the human condition very deep in a way. So it was very surprising how you guys guide us manipulate us into something. <laughs> but I loved it. That's why I loved it. That's Don't you so agree that it's like that a little? It's like, da 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 da, and then whoa. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope so. I'm glad. I'm like, that's so cool that that's the reaction. That's a huge compliment. Yeah. Um, no, but it's like that, no? I think. At the party, you think, oh, they're going to do whatever, but nothing's going to happen. They'll have smoke a joint and they're all happy. But then, wow, <laughs> all the things. Yeah. yeah. So there can are, you can there are you comment on that, <laughs> Ryan? What you were saying something? Oh no, so? I was just saying there there are there is like a dark undertone that kind of goes through you know the script. I think just because Vic's writing is so um, psychological and not not surface in any way. Would you agree, Vic? Sure. Uh, I kind of want very to real too. I wanted to. I want everyone to be kind of like. Maybe not quite a bait and switch, but I want everything to feel like it's winding up for one thing and then kind of zig when it's supposed to zag and keep you entertained and ultimately have it be bigger than, uh, you know, you thought it was going to be, you know, um, that, that just seems like the fun way to do it. <laughs> I didn't want to announce I'm going to make an important movie about the human condition. I want to be like, oh, we're going to do no. this sexy little movie and then oh did we accidentally say something kind of deep sorry i don't know it just seems like more fun a more fun way to approach it you know what's funny for me right now that uh rachel is more like olivia i think right now and kate is more like nina <laughs> so i think you reverse it on purpose oh, and, and you already mentioned that uh, me and ryan are the same person you're the same, yeah. You are. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Um, so I have a couple more questions because I think they gave us 15 minutes. This is going to be in, uh, in two. Uh, Screen Slam is a YouTube channel. It's really cool. And then there's a European uh, platform that's called uh, Canal Plus. And oh, cool. Um, uh, a cool thing there too. Uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, I, I forgot, wait, wait, it's coming back. I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I know, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, launching a film during the pandemic must be, I mean, for many people, there's a silver lining. The pandemic has bring the possibility to independent filmmakers and actors who love this kind of productions to let their work known because you don't have like, big productions from Hollywood invading the theaters or the plat streaming platforms. So mm -hmm. uh, how, if you could comment on the pandemic and how it has benefit in a way, the launching of a film like that, or because many filmmakers consider that it, it's been positive for them as filmmakers, mm -hmm. not the, as people. The, but. the strange thing was when the pandemic hit, the last thing I cared about was the movie. This thing that I cared about so much, all of a sudden felt so small. And it was just like, with everything that's going on right now, it's just like, I can't think about this right now, you know? Um, right before it hit, we had our festival premiere and got to do a big screening and that was really cool. It was really great to see the movie with an audience and I'll never forget that. Um, and you know, since we've been doing virtual festivals, so that's been interesting in its own way, but a little awkward, honestly. Um, I think it's cool to get to do festivals that are in Florida, for instance, that we wouldn't have gotten to go to otherwise. 
And I think it's cool that we all are doing these like Zooms for publicity and stuff. Um, I think that's really fun. I also think it's kind of interesting that because of the pandemic, so many big movies are being now released straight to VOD. And in one sense, our Little Fish movie is competing with all these big fish movies for attention. But in a different way, the playing field is like level where we're getting essentially the same release as a giant uh, Disney movie or something. So like, that's also very strange, you know, like release date, Wonder Woman, first blush it's like what <laughs> like i don't know um it's 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 a bizarre not just for movies just obviously in general it's such a bizarre time you know it's just been absolutely crazy i just need one more soundbite and then i leave you alone uh, to all of you what do you think a war season is starting like golden girls all those things that are uh, uh what do you think of award season and uh, if it's a, if these awards are positive for the film industry or for actors and directors and people like you, let's say? And what do you think they bring? If you can, each one of you can give me a little uh, opinion, a little testimonial, really short with a... Who's going first? Nobody. Okay, Drew, I mean, Ryan. <laughs> Um, I think that uh, the award stuff, you know, is uh, it's important to kind of, you know, recognize the work of, of you know, your, your peers and highlight stuff that was really extraordinary. I think there's a lot of work that goes overlooked and in that way, you know, award season kind of minimalizes um, a lot of stuff. And uh, also, I think at the end of the day, they don't really mean, you know, all that much. It's all slightly political, isn't it, as well? Oh, yeah. I mean, you hear what these people have to go through. It's, it's you know, it's crazy. And those crazy campaigns of marketing for months, wearing high heels and... and yeah. Going to lunches and dinners and, you know, you got to really sell yourself in the movie. Yeah. 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 Um, I've never been nominated for an Oscar, you know, so I can't really speak to it. <laughs> I but did, you I mean, might, you might. <laughs> there's, there's that Warren Beatty quote where he's like, the, the Golden Globes are fun, the Oscars are business. So there is something to, if your movie does really well in awards season, it allows you to like get a lot of money to make a three hour uh, movie about the Bolshevik revolution next, if you want to, you know? So um, I think it's cool that the industry still has a reason to try to make good movies, even if it's for like awards uh, money, <laughs> like, you know, awards season. Uh, I feel like they need a reason to keep making good movies. Otherwise they just won't bother. So I'm, I'm all, I'm for it. Go for it. You know, I like the Oscars. It's fun times. Cool. Uh, yeah. I think the awards season is an opportunity to recognize artists and what we offer the world because we do offer something significant at the same time art is subjective and i think that's what we should always remember that when you're celebrating somebody as the best this or the best movie you're comparing it to a genre that's totally different or an actor who played a completely different role so yes i love to acknowledge my fellow artists uh, but I think it's important to remember what everybody's contributing. Mm 